Hello and welcome back to another episode of What's in the Word with evangelist Kevin Wagner and myself, Joshua Wagner. We are continuing to look at Acts chapter 8. We have just seen Philip the evangelist do great ministry in Samaria that he then passed Amen. on to Peter and John who helped oversee the discipleship work there. And now he reappears with another fantastic evangelistic story. Dad, uh, why don't you read for us uh, verses 26 through 29? Yeah. So, now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official, in charge of, the treasury of, of all the treasury of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home, was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. So Philip, after his great crusade in Samaria, is then directed by an angel to go to the desert. And this uh, may seem strange to him. Maybe he would have liked to have stayed around in Samaria. God's doing great things there. But the, the evangelist is, is always on the move. And yeah. here you have <clears throat> uh, Philip being directed to a much more difficult location, the desert. <laughs> Go to the desert. And yet he obeys. And it's important that we, when we hear the voice of the Lord or the voice of the angels on behalf of the Lord, that we are quick to obey no matter how difficult the word may be. I think it's important, Josh, for everyone to know that the Holy Spirit, of course, He speaks to us through the Bible. That's yeah. why we teach the Bible. Yeah. Those are, are, you know, the primary, that's the primary way the Lord speaks to us. But the Holy Spirit also still, yes. He hasn't changed yes. from Bible days. He still speaks to people, to me, to you, to everyone watching here. He speaks to you about specific things. That's right. He speaks to you about things He wants you to do today. Yeah. Who do you want me to uh, interact with today, Holy Spirit, that you want to help me get them closer to Jesus That's or right. even get them saved? That's right. That's the prayer that you should be asking yourself. The Holy Spirit speaks to you about specific things. Yeah. It's not mental illness that causes you to hear the voice of God. It's the uh, reality for uh, Christians, for people who have a relationship with Jesus, that should be a daily reality in your lives. Amen. Amen. God's always speaking, and it's important that we're listening. And in this instance, he is directed to the desert where he meets a man uh, who is an Ethiopian eunuch, a diplomat of uh, Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. Mm -hmm. Anything that stands out to you about this individual here, Dad? I mean, he was uh, uh, someone who was uh, a Jew. Uh, he went to Jerusalem to worship, it said. Uh, and so he was a, a Jew coming from Ethiopia. Uh, as you said, he was an important man. And uh, he was into the word of God. He was reading the word of God. Mm -hmm. um, it does describe him uh, as Ethiopian. Of course, we have done multiple crusades in course, Ethiopia. We love great Ethiopia. Crusades. Um, Ethiopia has a very deep and rich Christian history that yeah. they trace all the way back to this man. Okay. Absolutely. Um, it, it also mentions that he's a eunuch. It was customary at this time that um, the servants and those who were in positions of power next to uh, a female power, in this case Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, um, would have been eunuchs, either yeah, by birth that's right. or uh, they were made that way. And so this is not unsurprising. He's told by the Spirit to go near where the chariot is and the man is reading the book of Isaiah. And Dad, now why don't you read for us the next few verses? Okay. Then Philip ran up to the chariot <clears throat> and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading? Philip asked. How can I? He said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. The eunuch was reading this passage of scripture. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter and as a lamb before the shearer is silent. So he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, Tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of Scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. 
This is a powerful um, encounter here, and there's a number of things that we want to draw from this. He is reading Isaiah the prophet. Uh, the quotation comes from Isaiah 53, which is the preeminent yeah. messianic chapter in yeah. the Old Testament, and it speaks of Jesus. And I want to point out something here. This man, likely a Jew, as Dad mentioned, reading the Bible, um, Isaiah the prophet specifically, reading about Jesus uh, from the prophecy of Isaiah in the Old Testament, and yet is still confused. Absolutely. He still needed a human, in this case Philip, to come and to share the gospel with him. And this is an important principle that we need to remember, that as wonderful as the Bible is, and there are a few people who love the word more than you and I, okay? We love mm, the Bible. Amen. Least, we know it's important. That's why we're teaching on it. It is still not, uh, on, on its own, you still need people to share the gospel. Jesus did not just go around, okay, saying, go into all the world and deliver Bibles. Yeah. Or go into all the world and just... Uh, give Bibles to people because the gospel is, communi is communicated through the proclamation, the preaching of the word. That's why Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. He needed, Ethi the Ethiopian eunuch needed Philip to explain what he was reading. Amen. And so it's important that we should be giving Bibles to people and the Gideons should be leaving the Bibles in the hotels and, mm -hmm. and, and those are wonderful things. I wish every person had a Bible and read it daily, but they still need help in understanding sometimes what it is that God is saying in the scriptures. And Philip comes at the right moment. God directs him to the Ethiopian eunuch to be the person who is able to teach him what he is reading about. You know, I think that, uh, I mean, Josh, you're 100% right. Philip asked an amazing question in verse 30. Do you understand what you are reading? Mm -hmm. That's the question that certainly evangelists are eager to ask, and every believer should be ready to ask people who are, you know, uh, interacting with the Word of God or even yeah. thinking of the things of God. Yeah. It's such an important question. And then... Uh, it says here in verse 35, I just love this verse so much. Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. And so Philip used, you know, the Bible yeah. as a launching pad into what you were saying is explaining the gospel to him, yeah. explaining what Jesus did for him, explaining uh, the, his need for salvation, uh, the reality that he's a sinner mm -hmm. and that he needs to be forgiven. And then inviting him to get saved. Yes. You know, it's just, nothing's changed in almost 2,000 years. Yeah, that's right. And, and one of the things I love about this is how Philip is ready. The Bible tells us that we need to be ready in season and out of season. Amen. You never know when you are going to have an encounter with someone who needs Jesus. Philip's just walking along the road and then, boom, Ethiopian eunuch. And, and not only is he ready to share the gospel, but he knows his Bible. Yes. He, he has the confidence to ask the question, do you understand what you are reading? Mm -hmm. Believing that no matter what the man's reading mm -hmm. in the Old Testament, he's going to be able to share about it. He's going to teach on it. He's going to be able to connect it to Jesus. And I want to challenge you. You know, imagine you're in Philip's situation and someone's reading their Bible. If you ask the question, do you understand what you are reading? Do you feel capable of being able to Bring some illumination, some insight from that passage of scripture. Do you feel qualified to then connect that scripture to the person of Jesus Christ? As believers, we should all be ready in season and out of season. Yeah, and I mean, if your answer is, well, I'm not sure if I really do, that's a fair and honest answer. Of course. But that's why we're doing videos like this. That's right. That's so right. So that you can be helped and aided in, in, in helping people the way yeah. Philip helped this eunuch. See, he began with that very passage of scripture. He started from the starting point of where the man was, and then he connected it to Christ. And we need to be able to have good answers to very good questions. Mm. Our world is asking good questions. Yeah. And so this Ethiopian, he asks a good, good question. If Philip's unprepared, if he doesn't know uh, what to say, maybe this man never gets saved because the eunuch thinks, oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about, and he right. doesn't understand my real issue here. We need to be prepared. Um, Peter says, study and show yourself approved, a workman who need not be ashamed, That's right. rightly dividing the word of truth. May all of us be able to say that of ourselves. Yeah. Dad, why don't you close uh, verses 36 through 40? 
Okay, as they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. Why shouldn't I be baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away. And the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at Azotus and traveled about, preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. There are many denominations who treat baptism very differently within Christianity yeah. and throughout the centuries. And certainly I think there is a real value to not rush into somebody's decision for baptism because sometimes people don't really realize the decision they're making and they need to count <coughs> the cost to use the language of Jesus. At the same time, I think there are also very uh, many instances where somebody has had a real encounter with Jesus. Amen. They really know the decision that they've made and they really want to follow through that decision with Jesus' commandment that we should all be water baptized if we have made the decision to follow him. And I think that this is a helpful e example where we see immediately after the man has learned about Jesus and gotten saved, he sees the body of water and he says, here's water and I'm a new Christian. What's to stop us from being baptized right here? And Philip sees no reason to stop him. And so I just would encourage, you know, we do need to count the cost. Mm -hmm. uh, we do need to have a, a sense of, of, uh, of awe and, and honor of these important parts of our faith, whether it's communion or baptism. At the same time, if someone's really genuine, if they really want Jesus, uh, let's give them Jesus. Absolutely. And let's give them an opportunity to follow through that decision with water baptism if they're really genuine about that decision. I think that what we can say about baptism, because as you said, the many different denominations in the world and groups of Christians have, and throughout history, have had different views of baptism, the mm -hmm. timing of it, it's, uh, uh, the age of it, etc. What we can say about every true Christian uh, denomination or group of Christians is this, that every true Christian group is going to consider baptism to be very important. Yeah. And they consider it important because of what you said. Jesus said to believe and be baptized. So again, we want to un outline the importance of baptism. Uh, one thing here that I find so powerful is when in verse 39 it says, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and he did not see him again. And then later it says in verse 40, Philip, however, appeared at Azotus. In other words, God supernaturally removes Philip from the situation. And there's a specific term for that. It's called translation. Mm -hmm. Now, we think about translating words into other languages, but translation is also a special theological word that uh, refers to this happening to Philip yep. and to two other people in the Bible. One of them was Enoch back in the book of Genesis, who the Bible says lived for a long time, over 300 years, and then God suddenly took Philip, or Enoch away. Now he took him to heaven. Uh, uh, Elijah was taken up to heaven in uh, that famous story in Kings uh, in a, a chariot of fire. And uh, so that was another example of translation. Both of them were taken from heaven or from earth supernaturally to heaven, to a different place. But Philip is the only person in the Bible that is taken supernaturally from one place on earth to another place mm -hmm. on earth. Yeah. And it just shows like that the power of God is unlimited and he can choose to do that. You know, I've told the Lord it, he could save our ministry a lot of time and money if he wants to just translate us when it's time to, I know, to go to India, you know, uh, just have me get in my closet and do a little narc. Yeah. And, right. uh, and I'll walk out in, in India. It hasn't happened yet, but I'm going to leave the door open for the Lord to do exactly, that. Exactly. Me too. Um, and so it's, it's a, it's a great story here. Like I said at the beginning, um, it is believed that the Ethiopian returned to Ethiopia, yep. bringing with him his newfound Christian faith. Praise God. And that there are there is a large portion throughout history of Jews living in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. And there is a really deep and long historical Christian Christianity in Ethiopia. Absolutely. And many of those people will trace their uh, faith all the way back For sure. to this moment in Scripture. And so you do not know the impact that you make. That the one person that you may minister to um, may be somebody who brings the gospel to a group of people 
that is going to last for literally centuries. Right. Do not underestimate the power of one. Mm -hmm. um, and I think one more last thing to mention is this. Philip, as an evangelist, is a great example where he can preach to the large crowds like yeah. he did in Samaria, and yet he's not too big to just preach to one-on-one -on -one to an individual here. And both yeah. things are important. We Absolutely. Need to be, we need to be willing to minister to large crowds and to individuals alike. And as we do it, God is going to use us. And that, my friends, is what's in the Word.